20 years ago, two best friends met at a diner and talked about creating a brighter workday. That's how Workday's story began, and that idea, written on a napkin, has guided our core values ever since. Today, we're applying that spirit of innovation to one of the most transformative technologies of our time, artificial intelligence. At Workday, we believe that AI isn't about replacing people, it's about empowering them. It's about giving us the tools to automate the routine, to gain insights faster, and to free up our time for what truly matters, the creativity, the collaboration, and the strategic thinking that drives innovation. All right, Phil. Workday is celebrating its 20th birthday. So what were you up to on your 20th birthday? Um, well, what I can remember. <laughs> Has it been a minute? <laughs> How about when I talk about in my 20th year? In your year. 20s. I'll in my 20th it. Okay. year. Okay. <laughs> so I was at my second year of college, no major, right? Mm. Um, still working that out. But I was plotting to uh, propose to my then girlfriend, uh -huh. now wife. So that was successful. Uh -huh. um, and I was in a uh, acoustic ska band. What? Which thankfully <laughs> never left the college <laughs> campus. <laughs> You sure there's not a recording out there somewhere? I thank God there's not. <laughs> well, there all right, back to you. <laughs> well, I too would have been in my second year of college, I believe. I probably didn't have a major yet either. Or maybe I thought I wanted to be a teacher. I think I wanted to be a teacher around that time. Fun fact, as far as school goes, though, I was in school for 10 years. I was counting the other day. <laughs> four years bachelor's, two years master's, four years PhD. So I guess you might say I love to learn. I guess so. All right, then. Okay, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question to that. Now that you've had this amazing career, what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? Honestly, buckle up. <laughs> it's going to be quite a ride. I think that's about what I would say. Do you have any better advice for your 20-year-old self? One piece of advice. Oh. Uh, never show up into a professional job interview wearing flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like good advice. That didn't go over so well for me. Did you really do that? I did. Oh my goodness. And I did not get the job. <laughs> but just once you did it. Just or more than once. Well, maybe. I, I, it took me a while <laughs> took a to couple, learn. A couple tries. Yes. Nice. So then, can you tell me what's something you've learned in your career that you wish you would have known mm. when you were 20? Yeah, I think the probably the most important was. Um, Failure is going to happen, and that's not the end of it, yeah. right? That actually failure is often the beginning of a new path that's undiscovered. And I just beat myself up a lot when 20, like, ah, I messed this up, or I didn't right. get this test right, or so forth like that. So, right, I can definitely uh, relate to that. I think, relatedly, like the journey, looking back, is as important and valuable as the destination. Yeah. So enjoy it, is yeah. what I would be thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about pop culture references. Let's do it. To 2005, yeah. all right, when Workday was founded. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you totally into mm -hmm. then? If <laughs> yeah, that was the year The Office debuted, and I've been a giant Office fan, can quote every episode ever since. What about you? Yeah, I did like The Office, but I was totally into Lost, the TV show, if okay. you remember. Yeah, I do. I don't really, <laughs> yeah, I spent that year trying to figure out, you know, what is happening in Lost. <laughs> sure. And uh, spoiler alert, I still don't know what happened, <laughs> even though all the shows concluded. Nice, nice. Two really great shows. Good year. Yes. Okay. Now to the serious stuff. All right. So Workday's origin is rooted in creating a brighter Workday. Mm. How do you see uh, our current AI initiatives furthering that original vision? Yeah, brighter Workday. So I'm really excited actually about where we're going with Agentic AI right mm. now. I know that Agentic is different and, and sometimes different can seem a little bit scary, but I'm really excited about it. And as far as how it can make a workday brighter, because if we do this right, if we crack this code and we figure this out, which I believe we will, I can imagine a future where workers are really comfortable sort of delegating jobs that they don't really want to do <laughs> to an agent. And mm -hmm. really what that does is it frees them up for an ability to think you know, about things that are more interesting, more thought provoking, really work that's more uniquely human. Mm. And wouldn't it be great to spend more time on things like that? Even today, I noticed I got time to sit down and think about what we were going to chat about. 
and, you know, what, what kinds of things I wanted to bring up. So actually the first time I've sat at my desk <laughs> and thought about something for a while. And I was like, this is really nice oh. not to have to just go, 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 That's sit nice. for a minute, you know? Can you relate to that? I can. <laughs> I did something a little bit different. I sat down and then opened up uh, some of my AI tools to help me prepare oh, for this conversation. Nice. And were they helpful? Yes. Yeah. Well, you'll decide at the end if it was useful. <laughs> great, great. Okay, Phil, now I've got one for you. How is AI changing the employee experience? And what are the key opportunities and challenges for HR leaders in leveraging AI to create a more engaging and productive workforce? Yeah, so for the employee experience, AI is both very exciting for employees, but can feel a little bit overwhelming. And I'll just give you an example. Uh, at Workday, nearly 70% of our employees are using AI in their everyday workflows already, wow. okay. right? Mm -hmm. And they respond feeling much more productive, uh, um, much more creative, and uh, more focused, kind mm -hmm. of like what you said earlier, yeah. right? And what we've also learned is that our highest performers are twice as likely to be high users of AI. Wow. So we see that connection there, which is exciting, I Very think. Very exciting. And we also see on the exciting part that those people who use AI the most also see greater paths for their career at Workday. Wow. And so we see like this nice, interesting connection between people being excited, using it, getting some value, and seeing uh, excitement for their career and their employee experience at Workday. That's but great. there's some barriers, right? Mm. A little less than half our employees feel like creating time to experiment and use AI in the workflow can be challenging. Um, they're not always sure how to use it, and they're concerned about the accuracy, oh. right? So there's still some barriers we have to get over. Mm -hmm. And I think from an HR practitioner standpoint, we need to equip our employees with better uh, mindset, uh, skill sets, and then habits to incorporate AI in their uh, normal workflow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, you know, I'm a data guy. I have some data around <laughs> AI. That's awesome. But since we're exchanging questions, yeah. it is your turn for a question. All right. All right. So what are the core principles guiding our approach to developing uh, and deploying AI? How do we ensure it's ethical and responsible AI? Yeah, so Phil, we have four AI ethics principles. The first one is amplify human potential, always humans first. The second one is positively impact society. The third one is champion transparency and fairness. And the fourth one is deliver on those commitments that we've made for data privacy and protection. Mm -hmm. The data privacy and protection stuff, I think we were just chatting a little while ago, like it's, it's really foundational, I think, to Workday. And so a lot of the times we're looking at our privacy principles that already exist mm -hmm. and thinking about how to deliver those when we're, you know, working with AI products. But, you know, I want to zero in for just a second on the transparency principle because our principles really act like our North Star, like they drive everything we do with AI. And when I think about what we've done lately to operationalize the transparency principle, we recently uh, decided to undergo a voluntary assessment with an independent third party to take a look at our AI governance program and compare it against these standards that are developing. One of them is the NIST AI risk management framework. Mm -hmm. The other one is an ISO standard for AI management. And it's really exciting. We've pretty much passed with flying colors and uh, it makes me feel really good because it's, it really is delivering on that transparency promise that we make in a way that our customers can see, our workmates can see, and others in the general public can see and really get a sense that they can trust us, which is really what we want. Well, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You know, uh, <laughs> leading that program, I'm sure you feel incredibly proud of the work that we've done. Yes, and then proud. And then that work is really about increasing trust. It's interesting you said that all of these standards and this focus and our principles is about trust. Why is trust so important with AI? Yeah, I mean, trust is everything, isn't it? Like, when you think about the beginning days of Workday, it was really built on a foundation of trust, yeah. right? I've been around for a minute or two, so I can remember <laughs> when HR folks had all of their data on a desktop machine, like underneath maybe, right? And the idea of, you know, allowing that data to move to the cloud, like what's the cloud? What does that mean? How can I trust it? So that's really where Workday was born. And that sense of trust is paramount. Mm. We always want to do good by people and by society carries through to today to yeah. our AI technologies. And I am really proud not only of my own work and my own immediate team's work, but this is 
this is all across Workday. This has been a cross-functional effort to bring these kind of things to life. It's super cool. It's awesome. It makes me so proud to be here. <laughs> <laughs> me too. All right. I know you have a question for me now. <laughs> <laughs> you guessed it. So AI is transforming everything, right? So how is it transforming workforce planning? Mm. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's helping our forecasts be more accurate. Mm. It's doing a much better job at predictions mm -hmm. and then explaining predictions. I think with adaptive and the AI features are coming out of there, it's really going to help planners have a conversation about why is my forecast have variance compared to the actuals or what does this scenario say and what are the implications? Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited when planners are in there and they're interacting, they're really getting advice from AI. Yeah. Yeah, which is super exciting. That's really interesting because isn't the why, the why is always the most interesting question. Like mm -hmm. why, what's going on here? Yeah. Help me understand it, right? That's yeah. very cool. And it's, you know, conversational tools are going to be able to interact with your plans and your forecasts and help better understand why that's happening. Nice. I think another super cool thing is if you think about it, AI is really going to reshape jobs. It's going to reshape the roles and responsibilities people have. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be managing AI agents. It's going to really um, rethink the skills that our workers need for the workforce, right? Yeah. And I think uh, that's going to influence workforce planning because there are new skills that are going to pop up and new roles and responsibilities are going to pop up. And even on top of that, AI is going to help us identify emerging skills. So we're going to rely on AI to help us identify the skills needed to manage AI, yeah. which I think is super cool. That is very cool. Nice. Exciting. Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Okay. My turn for a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm up. <laughs> As agentic AI evolves, what are the most pressing ethical considerations in ensuring its responsible development and deployment? Yeah, it's a great question. There's a lot I could say, but there's two things that really, you know, come to mind. The first thing that people ask me about a lot is human oversight. So mm -hmm. remember when we talked about the principles, I mentioned the first one is to amplify human potential. And so I've been asked, like, do we have to change that? Um, is that out the window? Like, what happened to human in the loop? No, <laughs> we're not going to throw out the amplify human potential principle. We're not going to throw out human in the loop. You know, I think there's a fairly straightforward way at Workday to think about human oversight when mm. it comes to agentic AI. It has to do with risk-based. So you're in the HR space, so, so you'll get this example really well, I'm sure. It's one thing to use an agent, program an agent, to maybe look through a bunch of candidate credentials, candidate information, mm -hmm. and identify ask the agent to identify a series of candidates that meet requirements in a requisition. That's one thing. It's something else entirely to say, okay, hire the person. <laughs> That's a risk-based assessment to mm -hmm. say, you can do this job for me because it's monotonous mm -hmm. and it's boring and it takes a long time. But then the uniquely human part has to do with, okay, so now what do I want to do with these different candidates? Mm. You know, the interaction with candidates, et cetera. So, I think we just need to get a little tighter on that risk-based assessment mm -hmm. of what are we really okay with automating and what are we not so okay with automating. And that's kind of been the conversation for a while now. So it's not, it's sort of easier to think about. Yeah. You just got to get a little bit tighter on it, I think. But the more challenging thing that I find more interesting is this question about, you know, we can align on a goal with an agent because agents are, you know, meant to be goal oriented, mm -hmm. meet this goal for me. But it's a little bit more tricky to align on values, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you ask a human being, you know, go find me candidates that fit this, whatever. When you ask an agent to do that, it's not coming to the table with any set of values or norms or principles. It's it's an agent, right? Yes. And so that's a, that's a unique challenge that we have in the governance and sort of ethical AI space is, so how do you do that then? Do you work to program the agent to say, here's not only the goal, but here's the values? Do you build other agents to govern mm. <laughs> the agents that are doing the work? I'm not, to be honest, I'm not really sure what the right answer is yet, but this is exactly the right place to be in terms of, you know, a great company to be asking these kinds of questions and thinking creatively about the answer. So it's, it's interesting, it's challenging, but it's exciting. Yeah. I know this is your domain, but it sparked an idea of like, imagine the agents that are deployed in companies and then say, hey, you really need to embed the values of this company into this agent that's yeah. deployed. And they're like, 
how does that then show up? Right. 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 Exactly. Um, yeah. It's it's. I mean, I could go on and on, but you know, like if you give an agent a particular goal, the agent is autonomous enough to create sub goals, and so then the question is, do the values only communicate with the original goal, <laughs> or do they carry? On? It's just interesting. Um, but that that you're thinking about it or exactly. The keep way that pulling I the strings. We have this agent and that agent. They have goals that when they're doing their tasks. All of a sudden, they're competing or they're in conflict with each other. Yeah. How do we resolve that? Right. Exactly. And is will there be any um, dishonesty? Yeah. <laughs> that we want to watch out for, right? I'm so glad you're doing your job and I'm doing my <laughs> job. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Fair. We're, we're situated in the right spot. Yes, right? we are. All right, Phil. So, with all of this in mind, what's your top piece of advice for HR and people leaders? I think for HR practitioners and people leaders, it's pretty simple. Um, I think AI can only be successful if people have the right mindset, skill sets, and habits to adopt, interact, and use AI. You know, as HR or if you're a manager, you need to create space for experimentation. You gotta、um, be、uh, give time for people to actually explore and use AI. And I think that right there, plus this permission to rethink work. And rethink how you should be doing your work,、mm-hmm. delivering your skills,、mm-hmm. creating more opportunities for、uh, this kind of human connection.、Yeah. That's going to be what makes AI successful in work and in the enterprise. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that sounds like really great advice. <laughs> and、uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's,、uh, let's capture the forward-thinking spirit of your conversation. So, workday started on a napkin. So we'd love for you both to、uh, write down a takeaway or a piece of inspiration from your conversation today, and then share it with each other. All right, All thank right. you.、Hmm. Wait, writing on a napkin with a marker is not really. Oh、uh, yeah, and my handwriting <laughs> is amazing. All right, <laughs> you、uh, you try to read mine. I'll try、oh, to read. I don't know that you're going to be able to read that. that. Yours is much better.、Uh, I cannot read this. Yeah,、huh. it just says exciting times.、Oh, okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's how I feel. It's exciting times.、Mm. And yours says, "Will agents have values?" Oh, I've got you thinking, huh? Yeah, that was so. <laughs>、uh, you know, there's so many layers to this. So it really struck me, like,、yeah. how is it going to evolve if agents have values and align to goals? So you know, deep thinker over there. Yeah, maybe we'll talk some more about it. I, I would really ex- be excited to. Awesome. This、yeah. has been great.、It's、Do you think s- we're supposed to eat this? Uh, or pay for this? <laughs> or pay for it?、I、oh yeah,、know. we should probably find out. Okay, let's、check. let's get a check. Check, please. please thank you.